lysosomes. So what are these lysosomes? Now we discussed about the Golgi bodies or apparatus in which the materials that are to be distributed are sent out. So those materials are packed and sent to lysosomes. Now these lysosomes they carry these materials to the destination to the final target place. So the lysosomes they consist of destroying enzymes destroying enzymes. So these destroying enzymes are there inside the lysosome. Earlier when the scientists do not know about these lysosomes they identified some destroying enzymes inside a cell. They do not know that these destroying enzymes are carried by lysosome. So they thought that it was a mystery for the scientist how a cell is able to withstand these destroying enzymes without collapsing, without getting destroyed. So they identified some substances are there which can destroy the cell. But nothing happens to the cell organelles when the cell is in living state. So it was a mystery. So later they found that these destroying enzymes are not directly present in the cytoplasm. If they are found directly in the cytoplasm, they come in contact with mitochondria, they may come in contact with nucleus, they may come in contact with the other organelles and they may digest them so the cell will die. So that is all not happening because these destroying enzymes are not openly found in the cytoplasm. They are not directly coming in contact with the different cell organelles. These destroying enzymes are packed up safely in lysosomes. So the lysosome even though it is carrying destroying enzymes, those are not directly coming in contact with the different parts of a cell. So nothing happens to the cell. So that is the major part of the lysosomes. These lysosomes they carry the materials inside the cell and they carry the materials out. Sometimes when the cell wanted to destroy itself, the lysosomes burst open up and these toxic materials enter the cell and they destroy the cell. So that is the reason why these lysosomes are called as suicidal bags of cell. So when a cell want to destroy itself, these lysosomes they break up and these destroying enzymes completely destroy the cell. Now we are going to talk about mitochondria. So mitochondria are called as powerhouses of the cell because these are the organelles which help in cellular respiration. So we all are living. To live we need energy. So we get energy from food. So the food it undergoes a process of digestion and after that it undergoes a process of respiration that is the cellular respiration in which the energy is liberated out of the food. So that process is called cellular respiration. So it is a very important process because without cellular respiration we cannot live, we cannot get energy to do any work. So that cellular respiration takes place in this organelle that is the mitochondria. So mitochondria are found in the cytoplasm of a cell and what is the shape of a mitochondria? Mitochondria are thread like, some spindle like, some mitochondria are comma shaped, some are round, some are oval. They may exist in different shapes. So they are very small. The size of the mitochondria, the length of the mitochondria, it will be around some 2 to 5 microns. If you take the width of the mitochondria, it will be around 0.5 microns. So they are very small. If you compare the size of the nucleus and mitochondria, so the mitochondria are 150 times smaller than the nucleus. So this is the nucleus. The nucleus is 150 times bigger than the mitochondria. So if you compare both the sizes, the mitochondria are very small. So the number, how many number of mitochondria are found? We find in general around 100 to 150 mitochondria per cell. 
but the number of mitochondria in a cell depends upon the type of cell. Some cells which involve in the production of energy, large amounts of energy, say for example muscle cells, leg muscles, hand muscles, that is when we are uh, running. So we need a lot of energy, our leg muscles need a lot of energy. So generally those cells, the cells in our leg muscles have more number of mitochondria because more amount of energy is to be produced. So their number varies from different cells. But in general, there are around 100 to 150 mitochondria inside a cell. If you look at the structure of the mitochondria, mitochondria is a membrane-bound organelle. So this cell organelle is having membrane, not single membrane. It is bound by two membranes. One is outer membrane of mitochondria and this is the inner membrane. So it has got two membranes, outer, inner. There is some space between the outer and inner membrane. So inner membrane has got so many folds called as cristae. These folds are called as cristae. So anyway, you are going to learn about these cristae, elementary particles and other, other details in your higher classes. So these are the major parts of a mitochondria. So what is the function of the mitochondria? In the beginning, we discussed that mitochondria are the powerhouse of a cell. Cellular respiration takes place inside this mitochondria to release the energy in the form of ATP. So all that process takes place in this mitochondria. So now we are going to discuss about ribosomes. So already we studied about these ribosomes when we were studying about the endoplasmic reticulum. So endoplasmic reticulum, it's providing the surface for the protein synthesis, preparation of proteins. Who is carrying out that process? That is the ribosomes. So the ribosomes are found in the rough endoplasmic reticulum. So they are attached to the membranes of the endoplasmic reticulum and which participate in the synthesis of proteins. So that is the major function of these ribosomes. Now we are going to Now we are going to talk about plastids. So plastids are the other important cell organelles found in plant cells. These plastids are of different types, chromoplast, chloroplast, this is chloroplast and the chromoplast and the other kind leucoplast. So the chloroplast or the plastids that are in green color, green color plastids which play an important role in photosynthesis. You all know that photosynthesis is a process by which plants prepare food material that is the glucose using carbon dioxide and sunlight. So the process of photosynthesis takes place in this organelle. What is this? Chloroplast. Then what is this chromoplast? Certain plant pots deposit different colors. Red color, orange color, blue color. That is all because of some color pigment in their plastids. Those are the chromoplast. So those are the plastids that have peculiar colors like red, orange, so on. And the third type is leucoplast. So these plastids, they do not have any color pigment in them. So they are white in color. So they are called as leucoplast. Leuco means white. So chloroplasts are very important plastid. If you observe the structure of a chloroplast, it is a membrane bound organelle just like mitochondria and nucleus. So these plastids are also membrane bound organelles. And they have two membranes, outer membrane as well as inner membrane. So inside the plastid, they have some structures called as thylakoids. Thylakoids. So all these thylakoids, they are arranged in stacks. Stack of thylakoids are called granum. And this space is called as stoma. 
this is the empty place this is called a stoma and they are these granum are connected like this so they have some pigment chloroplast it has called green color pigment which helps in the process of photosynthesis so these are the plastids these chloroplasts they are found in different shapes generally in plants they are oval or disc shaped but whereas if we find in algae they are in algae they are filamentous that means they are like some ladder some spiral in such long shapes also they are formed so whatever the shape may be the major function of the chloroplast is to prepare the food material using carbon dioxide and sunlight they carry out the process of photosynthesis and they prepare the food material for the plant Cut. now we are going to talk about vacuoles so vacuoles are found in both plant as well as in animal cells but in animal cells the vacuoles are of very small size but in plant cells the vacuoles they occupy the major part of the cytoplasm they are very big in size so vacuoles are the spaces that are filled with some fluid so they are the empty spaces that are filled with some kind of fluid what does this fluid contain this fluid contains some water some minerals some salts and so on so this is the vacuole cut or cells flat so here is a question or cells flat so when we are drawing the diagram of a cell we draw a two dimensional diagram so this is a two dimensional diagram so it appears like cells are flat but in fact cells are not flat cells have a three dimensional shape they are not two dimensional three dimensional say for example cells are spherical so how is the earth earth is not flat so it is having the spherical shape so this we can observe using if we use a powerful microscope then we can observe the three dimensional shape of a cell so either plant cells or animal cells they are not flat they are the three dimensional shapes which may exist as cylinder shape or oval or spherical or spindle whatever the shape may be that shape is a three dimensional shape where do cells come from there were two scientists in 1838 and 39 that is matthias jacob schleden and theodor squam so these two people they generalized the cell theory so what does it state it says that all the living organisms are made up of cells and cell is having a nucleus so they said that cell is the basic unit of life and each cell is having a nucleus so many scientists gave these things but these two people declared the cell theory stated these two points and they declared it so the credit has come to this schleden and square so later in 1855 rodolf von virchow what did he say he has answered to one more thing one more question which was not known and not given by these two people also that is from where do the cells come from so these two people they have said that the cells are the basic unit of life and each cell is having a nucleus but they did not give that how the new cells come so this person rudolf von virchow has given that the new cells come from the pre existing cells by a process known as cell division so he was the person who has given the point to the cell theory that is all the cells come from the pre existing cells by the process of cell division so now we learned that from where the cells 
come from.